morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Thank you, Lord. Prayer request in the chat. You have them. It started in about three minutes. Y'all, I'm excited this morning. It's about to be an overtaking. An overtaking. Overflow. Come on now. The morning. I was in the chat. If you don't mind the overtaking of overflow, vibes in the chat. If you don't mind the overtaking, vibes in the chat. If you know you've been walking long enough, you've been waiting long enough. If you feel it, it's a song that say, "I can feel it in the air." Can you just feel it in the atmosphere this morning, Jesus? So get ready. It's a get ready in the atmosphere. It's a, it's a get ready in the atmosphere. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. That's right. Good morning, Glenda. Good morning, Samantha. Good morning, Colleen. Good morning, Caitlin. Good morning, Nicole. Good morning, Darisa. Good morning, good morning. Got one more minute and we'll go ahead and get started. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 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 God, I thank you. Thank you. You have any prayer? You have any prayer requests? You can drop those in the chat. Thank you. Okay. Amen. Amen. All right, good morning. We're going to get started on today. Y'all, I'm going to jump right into the word today. We're going to go ahead and pray after. We'll uh, be praying until 6.50. After that, if the Lord puts anything on your heart, you can drop it in the chat or you can drop it in our group. Um, and then, you know, we done at 7. That's, that's, how, that's how it's supposed to go. But the last few days, God really has been having his way. And I hope that you've been allowing him to just really transform your days, right? I hope you've been allowing him to take you from prayer call to, you know, really walking with you in work, really walking with you in your home because that's what he desires. And so today, the word that God gave me um, and he prepared, he gave me last night, he started dealing with me with better. Started dealing with me with better. He said, so many people want better, he said, but I don't want better for my people. I was like, what? <laughs> what? You don't want us to be better. He said, I want you blessed. I want you blessed. Blessed is bigger. Blessed goes beyond better. Don't, he said, don't turn to me to get better. Turn to me to be blessed. Because better is just an upgrade from your current situation. It's just an upgrade. He says, I want you blessed. Go ahead and put blessed in the chat. And so the, then he started dealing with me with the scripture. And, and, and the scripture is about the blind man. And he said, don't get blinded by better. So today, the Lord doesn't want us to be blinded by better. He wants us to focus on being blessed. And so we're going to look at that scripture, but then we're going to also look at Deuteronomy 28, because in Deuteronomy 28, it shares with you all the blessings of what it looks like when God has called you blessed. And so we're going to look at those blessings and we're going to pray that God would even give us a paradigm shift. 
that when we start to ask for God, I just want things a little better, that we be reminded that we are seated in places where God has literally ordained us to be blessed. Blessed is your portion. Ain't nothing, ain't nothing wrong with the people that want to be better. But listen, I came into Christ to make me whole. He made me whole. He gave me a few things. He promised me a few things. And so if I'm going to be on this side, I don't want to just get better. I want to be blessed, blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed when I come, blessed when I go. I want to be blessed. Fives, if you want to live a life of blessings. I don't know about you, but where blessings show up, curses can't be. When blessings show up, sickness can't stand in the room. When blessings show up, poverty can't be there. When blessings show up, depression got to go, anxiety got to leave. My uh, critical self-image of myself, it has to go. When I'm blessed, everything else has to take a backseat to being blessed. And so there's no room for better. I hope this headache gets better. No, I have the authority to speak to it. I hope my body gets better. No, blessed says I'm healed. I hope my situation, my finances, my resources get better. No, bless. And so today, Mark 8, 23. Mark 8, 23. Says, so he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village. Then he spit on the man's hands and placed his hands on them. Can you see anything? He asked. 24 says, the man looked up and said, I can see people, but they look like trees walking around. So he was blurred. His vision was blurred. And so the Lord said, Today, some of us have been blinded by better. Better has blurred our vision from what God really wants to do. You've settled for better, but God says, I want you blessed. So don't be blinded by better situation. When, I, when we got down, when we got into the house that we're in right now, it was better than a hotel we had been staying in for 30 days because we couldn't find a place when we moved down to Florida. It was better. But a few uh, uh, months into me being here, the Lord says, don't settle here. Don't be okay here. Yes, it was everything that we asked for in a place, but it wasn't our place. It was just a rest stop. And so for you, as God continues to bless you and move you beyond your certain circumstances, don't get complacent with better. Better is just a rest stop. I believe everybody, everywhere, everyone on this call, even the ladies in the chat that couldn't make the call this morning, that find themselves in better, that finds themselves in a place right now, I believe it's only temporary until we can get behind the move of God and how he really wants to work until we can get the understanding in our minds that bigger and blessed is our portion. Is that for anybody other than me on today? The Bible says he took them by the hand out of the village. Sometimes God has to lead you out of certain circumstances. And many of us on this call this morning, we got up because we were waiting on God to take us by the hand. That excites me that God would hold my hand and lead me into something greater. That he's never not held my hand. But I noticed it this morning. I noticed it this week. I noticed it this month. I noticed it this year. That there's something different about my walking with God this year. Does anybody else walk different? Child. So he don't want us to be blinded by better. The man said, I can see, but it looks like he was all right with that because he couldn't see before. Sometimes when you're in a bad place, better is all right. And you're like, ooh, thank you, Lord. I'm good here. Ooh, this church is, this church is busting. I, it was way better than the last place. Woo. This relationship, ooh, I, I love it. I love it here. It's better than where I came from. Don't settle for better. Because the enemy will always give you a better option. 
He won't give you a blessed one. People say the, the enemy will bless you too. No, he'll give you better. You'll have a decision to make. And if you don't listen to the Holy Spirit, see, even when you make the wrong decisions, that's why the Bible says all things work together for my good. Even when you make the wrong decision, God says, I'll always give you a way out of escape. God will show you. If you listen, he'll show you, hey, this ain't right. You might want to pivot. Hey, this connection ain't really where you want to be. You might want to you might want to take a, a sharp left. I'm a living witness. Even this year, I was making the de decision about how the provision that God was granting. He gave me two opportunities. One opportunity that I really wanted, and I thought I wanted it. Another opportunity, I was like, eh. Hmm. I mean, if I needed to do it, I'd do it. The opportunity that I thought I wanted was going to have me compromise time with my family. The atmosphere that I was in, it just irked my spirit as soon as I got there. A younger version of myself would have said, you know what? God placed you here. You can help. You can minister to these people. You can do this, 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 and that. But when I got there, Holy Spirit said, you see? You see? I just had, I just had to let you check it out. This ain't really where you want to be. So I was like, all right. I ain't going to be here. I'm going to do the big girl thing. I called the lady. I said, thank you so much for this, but this is not really for me at this time. I appreciate it. Oh, we really wanted you to stay. I know you did. I got to go. Same day, the second opportunity called me on the phone and I was dodging it because I was like, I don't really want that. I don't want to do that. It's not me. Yeah, come in. Gotta go. <laughs> I got out of that fast. Because my spirit was vexed. And the Holy Ghost was like, no. I, was, I wasn't trying to turn a no into a yes because this is what I wanted. I saw the potential. It was better. If I could just get through this first phase, if I could just get through this, I mean, it's going to get better. It's promising. This was a job opportunity, by the way. It was promising. Unlimited capital or income earning, it was promising. So then I went home and then the other opportunity called me. And I was like, that mug rang for like three times. I thought after three rings, it's supposed to be like, go to the voicemail. Nah. Third ring, the Lord said, answer. I pick up the phone. And even though from my perception, from my, my perspective, this is not really what I wanted. Guys, it was everything that I needed it to be. And so what is, the, what, what is that? See, sometimes your body, your emotions, your feelings, your mind, your excitement will testify against the blessing in disguise. Sometimes better will seem bigger than what's really actually blessed. But will you investigate the blessing, even if it don't look better at the moment? Sometimes we got to investigate the blessing. And that's what he did. He let God take him out the village. Oh, Jesus. Okay. All right. Let me get on off of this. Deuteronomy 28. And this, this scripture holds one of my favorite uh, one of my favorite uh, scriptures. Deuteronomy 28 and 12 is one of my favorites. But Deuteronomy, is that making sense? I hope this is helping somebody. We're going to pray. We got to get this word today. God wants us blessed. He wants us to get used to being blessed. He wants us to understand that even on your road to being blessed, there are certain things that will testify against the blessing. Your mind and your emotions being one of them. Your feelings being one of them. Your body being one of them. God will say you healed. God will say you have authority. And guess what? Your body will start aching in places and pains you ain't never knew existed. Your mind will start telling you, look up 
WebMD and MID and all of them Ds and you go crazy. Maybe that's just me. So Deuteronomy 28. This is my favorite part. I'm gonna say my favorite part, but okay, the whole the whole thing is my favorite, y'all. But it says, if you fully obey the Lord, your God, and carefully follow all of his commands that I give you today, the Lord will, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. From De Deuteronomy 28 to um, 28, 1 to 13, and I definitely would say you guys could, should read it and go over it, but from 28 and 1 through 13, God shares every blessing that is attached to your obedience. From 1 to 13, every blessing that's attached to your obedience. Then from 14, I think, to about 52, he talks about every curse that comes up against you. There are more curses than anything. Some people think that it's a situation, but the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. That don't just mean people. Sometimes there are curses on you. You got to recognize what the curse is. You got to understand tumors and all that stuff. That's a curse. Sometimes you got to go ahead and uproot the curses. You got to figure out where did the curse come from? Where did I let the door in? Where's the disobedience at? Because it also talks about how disobedience will breed curses. And guess what, y'all? I don't got time to teach y'all this, but you don't have to be the disobedient one. That's why it's a, such thing as generational curses. The disobedience can be in your bloodline. It can be in your finances. Yeah. It could be in something that you partner with and you didn't know. It could be in a person that you see that you put seed in, you sold into it, you didn't know, and your money testifies against you. So there's a lot of things that curses come up against us, but obedience. We're talking about being blinded by better today. Good morning, Tiaja. We're talking about being blinded by better. Some of us, we in better situations, but we're struggling. Can I just tell you that, yes, in this life, you will suffer with Christ, but it doesn't say you will struggle with him. Can we just speak out loud or write in the chat if you agree with that? Struggle no more. Because down through the years, the saints have had us to thinking that struggling and poverty and lowliness is the same as humility and blessing. And this is the route. And that if I'm going to reign with Christ, I'm going to suffer with him. Suffering and struggling are not the same. They're not synonymous. You can go through stuff, but it don't have to be a struggle. Does that make sense for anybody? I don't know why I had to throw that in. So let's 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 talk about these blessings. The first blessing of God is prominence above other nations. God will always elevate you. And that's in Deuteronomy 28 and 1. He says, if you obey, Colleen been talking about extreme obedience. If you obey on this day, do what God tells you to do. He says, I will put you high above all the nations of the earth. Your obedience will unlock the blessing of elevation. Number two, your obedience, the verse number two, number three says, you will be blessed in the city and blessed in the country. That means successful cities, successful countries are your portion. We talk about we the Abraham the blessings of Abraham Abraham and Sarah bore nations. So the fruit of your wombs, the seeds, the cities, everywhere you go, there should be blessings. You should feel the overflow. The city that God has planted you in, it should be changed. You should feel it around you. You should feel it. Why? Because kingdom, child. Deuteronomy 28 and 4, here's another blessing. Blessings of children, blessings of food, and blessings of livestock. Now, I had to study into this one and go deep, y'all. So here's the thing. Every barren woman in the Bible didn't always stay barren. Those women that were blessed of God, 
They didn't always stay barren. The blessed woman, she produced. She produced. And, and, and for a while, I used to be afraid to say she produced children, right? Because I would limit God and I didn't want to get anybody hopes up because I know what it's like to want a baby. I know what it's like to not be able to have one and be such and I know what it's like to lose them. I know what it's like to be like, hey, is that on me? That was my fault. So for years, I would tiptoe around that. Even if God would give me a word that a woman would be pregnant, I would still cautiously, you know, approach that subject. But in 2023, baby, let me just tell you that barrenness is not of God. Yes, there are some women that he said he shut up their womb, but it was to get their attention. And when they asked, he blessed it. See, it's a blessing to bear. It's a blessing not just to bear and give birth to spiritual blessings and spiritual children, but also physical children. That's your portion. He gives us a manuscript that shows us what the women that were bearing, what did they do? How did they posture themselves? Children are a blessing. And so he says, I, I will bless the, fr the fruit of your womb in 28 and 4. He says, we'll be blessed. The crops of your land will be blessed and the young of your livestock will be blessed. And I, and I tried to say, okay, Lord, in modern day, what does this mean? I went and Googled, you know, Google the God to be your best friend. In modern day, what is blessed, of, you know, the crops of your land and the livestock? What does that translate to? And Lord said, it translates to food and livestock. <laughs> Here's the thing, he says the crops of your land, God never intended you not to have real estate. God never intended you not to own land. God never intended you not to be prosperous. Land, land guys, is one of the biggest assets and forms of wealth building. So God from the beginning promised us land. He gave us a promised land. And in the land, the land produced things that brought about even more and greater fortune. It's my desire that each and every one of you get a plot of land. It's my desire that each and every one of you get livestock. I started to, to read and I started to study that livestock, cattle, and uh, all different forms of live, livestock is actually the second most liquid asset in the world. Cash is the first liquid asset. When you hear people say, I got a lot of assets, but I'm not liquid. That just means that they don't have real money that they can go ahead and go grab. It's in a house. They got equity in the house. So their network is good. Their net worth is good. Maybe they got it not in the car, but they have it in other things. Maybe they got stocks and bonds and crypto or whatever it is that they have. They have these assets, but it's a process before it can get into cash for them to pay for something. That's what liquid is. Liquidity is right? Cash is the most liquid. Livestock. So when you riding down the fields, you taking your kids or you just like to drive and you see people with horses and cattle and those people are blessed. The average, the average uh, uh, cattle right now is going for 1900. I'm seeing so many people with, with uh, cows and Baby cattle's going, bulls is going for like 2,000. I sat here and read this. I said, Lord, I'm lacking. I done got on my vision board a whole Range Rover with I don't know how much horsepower. <laughs> Bro, I need some horses. <laughs> I need some cows. That's our portion, though. My people perish for lack of knowledge. Some of y'all like, I that ain't no farmer girl. I ain't no. You don't even know it's money on the table that God wants you to have. It's land that God wants you to have. Why? Not just for you, but it positions the kingdom because guess what? Prayers move heaven, but money moves the earth. It ain't no, you don't see no broke politicians. You don't see no broke people with influence. That's why Instagram and Facebook will pay you a million plus dollars to be an influencer. Because money moves the earth. And God is saying, I'm tired of my people being broke and living under the circumstances of demonic laws, demonic oppression from people in high power. I'm tired of them twisting state in the church and the church plus the state and all of these different things when the church is supposed to dictate the state. The church and the kingdom is supposed to dictate the economy. But if my people stay broke, there's a scripture in Proverbs where it talks about how basically a broke man doesn't hold the ear of anybody. 
There was a wise man in all the earth and he had the, he had the answers to help the country, but nobody listened to him because he was poor. God wants you to be blessed because he has an agenda. He needs to move through you. Don't settle for better. <laughs> you blessed. Let me get through these because we done. We all the way through. I ain't even got to pray yet. I'm going to have to come back to these tomorrow. Amen. Thank you, Lord. The fourth one, 28 and 7. Protection and power against the enemy. 28 and 7, the Lord will grant that the enemies who rise up against you will be defeated before you. They will come at you from one direction, but flee from you in seven. You have to understand that a part of your portion is God protecting you. Is God giving you power against a defeated enemy? Is him just having your back. That's why you ain't got to go to war. God will do it. When you bless, God does it. You ain't got to, you ain't got to get nobody told. I ain't got to fight people no more. God got it. You be like, don't be praying. No, no. I used to, I grew up a little bit. But when I first figured out what Psalm 35 was, I started looking and studying David and how David would be like, smite thee, O Lord. My enemies are against me. I'm like, oh, he's sick in Jesus' on people. You can't let it, you can't, you can't let a retired thug hear that. I said, oh Lord, you want to fight? Okay. In my pettier, earlier days, I'd be sick in Jesus on people left and right. I give people mercy because now I say, you know what? If they knew who I was, they would have left me alone. God, if they knew who I was, they would have left me alone. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost, that I ain't got to be a fighter like David. I ain't got to go ahead and stick you. But third, Psalm 35 is in there. I will use it if I need to. Everybody probably like, oh, my God. Look, Psalm 35, let me get that. <laughs> so he'll protect you. So on today, we're going to pray that God's blessing will continue to overflow in our lives, that he will continue to, to, to show us how we've been settling for better in areas when God wants us to be blessed. Today, we're going to pray. We're going to praise. We're going to worship, but we're going to believe God for the blessings that are on our lives. We're going to believe God that he wants us healed. We're going to believe God that he wants to put us in position to make sure our finances are in order, that he wants to put us in position to make sure we're managing and we're good stewards of the things that he gives us, that he wants to put us in position where the overflow overtakes us every single day. The word I got in the shower today was, you won't get used to these kinds of blessings but it will be normal. What God is getting ready to do in your life, Glenda, Tiasia, Nicole, Kate, Colleen, Samantha, India, Tiara, Corey, all of it, Sam. What God is getting ready to do in your life, Tawana, Mel, trying to make sure I get everybody's name that's in the group. What he's going to do in your life, the blessings that are coming to overtake you. Every time the Lord says he's going to keep topping it. You ain't going to be able to get used to it. You ain't going to be able to settle at this level of blessed. Because every time you turn your head, Amos 9.13 says, how it's going to come so fast and make your head swim. You won't be able to get used to how God is blessing you, but he says it's going to get normal. It's going to be the norm. It's going to be the norm for people to say, listen, God wanted me to give you this check for $100,000. Oh, Jesus. Listen, God wanted me to go ahead and do, listen, I, I know, I've I seen your story. I know all about you. Here's a, I want to tell somebody own testimony so bad, but y'all just need to know God is giving stuff that don't got no business being given. He giving people stuff. 
We ain't we ain't 30 days into the year and God is doing turnarounds like that. Okay, tell it. Hey, hallelujah. God gave Tiasia a whole car. Gave it to her. Gave it. Sat down to have lunch with somebody. Walked away from lunch with a car because the Lord put it on their heart to give it to her. She said, when I was done, my lashes, everything, makeup one, no good. She sat down to eat. Y'all, she sat at the table. What we hear this at? She sat at the table. She got called to a place that was a little better than her circumstances was before. She sat down to eat. In this season, the table that God prepared to you, all you got to do is take your seat. She came to eat, but God says, I'm going to bless. I'm sick of you just going from better to better. I'm sick of you just settling for better. This is a little better than where I came from. This is a little better. I ain't got everything that I want right now. I don't have a car right now, but God, I'm just going to trust you for better. And God says, stop trusting me for better. Start trusting me for blessed. Start trusting me for overflow. Start trusting me for my blessings to overtake you. Because in my word, nowhere in my word does it say, and God called her better. Don't get blinded by better. The enemy can do better. Can't do blessed. That woman sat down for lunch, walked away with a whole car. She could drive to the new job that she got this month. And then she can go ahead and drive to the new house that looked exactly like the things that she had written down. Guys, it's ain't we 26 days into the year. In January 1st, she didn't have a house. She didn't have a car. She didn't have her job. She had her businesses. Insurance agent, life insurance. If you need it, you better get it. Prominent coach. But guess what? Struggle, but still willing to suffer with God. She said, Peach, I will wake up in the mornings and be like, all right, Lord, but I trust you. She said, oh, she's suffering with me. Oh, she think this is it. She think the suffering struggle. No, no. So she got an opportunity, a call came. Hey, can you come down here to South Carolina? She wanted to go to Atlanta and do something what she wanted to do. Again, presented with better and blessed. But she had to investigate what was blessed. She had to investigate South Carolina. Uh, that don't really sound like my plan and what I really want to do. I'm trying to figure out a way to get to Atlanta. So I can go and take care of my business. So I can get my business jump started, kick started. Figure out. Faith and figure out don't go. When you when you find yourself trying to figure it out, you you settling on better. Got a call from South Carolina to go investigate. Hey, you can stay here for a while. You can do some business from here. We'll do some trainings with you. Not knowing all the Lord God was setting her up. See, God be doing stuff in the background. And right now, God is still doing stuff in the background for us. He's building out blessings in the background. <laughs> she, God give you a testimony. Don't even sound like it. She said, this don't even sound like it's me. It's you. It's you. And the blessings are only just starting to flow, child. God building stuff in the background. He putting pieces and, pe and people in places to be a blessing to you. Sometimes you got to investigate it. You got to know your portion. You got to know your portion. We talked on the phone. She said, I looked around and I said, this is not, this is not how I'm supposed to live. 
Some of us got to do a circumstance check and say, listen, this is not how I, the way I serve you, God, the way I praise you, God, the way I rep you, God, the way I do what I do for you, God, this, this, this cannot be how you want to be represented in my walk. God wants you to testify. He wants to have these testimonies when you can sit down and they can call you for lunch. And really, you think they want to pay for your lunch, but they didn't already pay for your car. While she's in the place and the position that God sent her to be blessed, he then sends her with a phone call of a job she'd been wanting. She'd been wanting. When she was trying to figure it out, she was trying to do this, that, that, go here, there, and there. And the Lord was like, I just need her to get to the place where she understands. She said, I had to get into agreement. This was a year of agreement for her. And some of us, we have not agreed that God, you call me blessed. Some of us have not agreed to partner all the way with the promises of God. Can you agree today? Can you agree that overflow and overtaking is your portion? Can you agree with the promises that's on your life? He's been trying to get us to see this whole time we've been praying. We on day 17. He didn't let us to seeing who you are. To understand that you got grace to do it. To understand it's time to occupy. You got territories. You got regions. Are you in agreement with who you really are? When she got into agreement and she got into the place where she was supposed to be, she said, Peach, you told me and I got in position and I'm locked there. I'm staying there. I'm not going and I'm not following everybody else just because they promised good glitz and glam. She says, I'm staying locked in my position. Because it's too much. When she stayed locked in, and she got in a position, and God blessed her with the, the job. He blessed her with the car to get there. This is provision. On her way down there, she said at some point she had like this vision. She said, Lord, you bless me. It's a, it's a certain kind of house I want. It's a certain kind of style of house I want. That's what she did. She wrote it down. Well, we've been, I'm telling y'all, better get the right. It's the same house, look, style, everything. And she in a position to name her price. She in a position to name her price or what she want to pay for it. God gave her the means to pay for it. He gave her provision to pay for it. So in one, in 26 days, house, Car, job, what do you want? He already taken care of your needs. What do you want? Because it's in the book. He provided it already in the book. It's in the manuscript. Blessings is your portion, ladies. And it don't take long. Go ahead and drop that in the chat. It don't take long. What God has for me, it ain't going to take all day. I ain't waiting on him. He waiting on me to agree. When he say, get ready, get ready, get ready, what is your get ready? Is it agreement? Is it belief? Is it a shift in your perspective? Get ready. Get ready. You ain't going to get used to it, but it's normal. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? This how he's starting off? Is this how he's starting off? We giving him this book? He already blew our minds. Somebody need a house and you thinking it is impossible. He can do it in 25 days or less. Somebody need a car. Somebody need a new job and you think it's impossible. He can do it in 25 days or less. How do you know? Because he did it for my sister. Same guy. Today, yesterday. And forever. Same God, no respect to a person. So we're going to praise God for T.H. Y'all blow the group chat up for her on today because whatever you celebrate, God will accelerate in your life. We're going to praise God and we're going to pray that we start to see the blessings and not just the better. And we settle for the blessings, the healing and your testimony. Drop those things in the group chat, y'all. You never know who needs her. 
Father God, we thank you for this day that you have made. God, we thank you for calling us blessed beyond better, God. We thank you, Lord, for the things that you have prepared that we have not seen. We thank you, Lord, for the things that you are doing in the background. We thank you, Lord, for building us up for such a time as this, God. We thank you, Lord, for taking us from struggle, Lord God, to success after success after success after success after success, God. We give you glory and honor on today, Lord God, for shifting our mind, Lord God, from not just seeking you for miracles, but sustaining us every day for miraculous blessings, God, that blessings is our portion. We speak Deuteronomy 28 and 8 over our lives, that the Lord will decree a blessing on us, our storehouses, our barns. God, we thank you, Lord, for sending the land, God. We thank you, Lord, for sending the livestock, God. We thank you, Lord, for sending the wealth, God. We thank you, Lord, for sending the blessings, God. We thank you, Lord, for ordering our steps and causing us to be blessed wherever we go. God, I speak a blessing of abundance over every woman present, be it here on the Zoom or watching the replay. God, we thank you for blessing the works of their hands, for blessing their obedience. Position us for obedience on today, God. We give you glory and honor. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, 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 amen. God wants to bless you. Let him bless you. To God be the glory. I will see you guys in the group chat. I will see you ladies on tomorrow, on tomorrow. I feel like Colleen got a word. Colleen dropped that thing in the group chat. Woo, in Jesus' name. Y'all be blessed.